Okay, we're back with Tim Yoakum, who is the Director of Engineering at Influx Data. Tim, welcome, good to see you. Good to see you, thanks for having me. You're really welcome. Uh, listen, we've been covering open source software on theCUBE for more than a decade, and we kind of watched the innovation from the big data ecosystem, the cloud is being, being built out on open source, mobile, social platforms, key databases, and of course, Influx DB and Influx Data has been a big consumer and contributor of open source software. So my question to you is, where have you seen the biggest bang for the buck from open source software? So yeah, you know, Influx really, we thrive at the intersection of commercial services and open source, open source software. So OSS keeps us on the cutting edge. Um, we benefit from OSS in delivering our own service um, from our core storage engine technologies to web services, templating engines. Uh, our, our team stays lean and focused because we build on proven tools. We really um, build on the shoulders of giants. Um, and like you've mentioned, even better, we contribute a lot back to the projects that we use as well as our own product, InfluxDB. You know, but I got to ask you, Tim, because one of the challenges that, that we've seen, in particular, you saw this in the heyday of Hadoop, the, the innovations come so fast and furious. And as a software company, you got to place bets, you got to you know, commit people, and sometimes those bets can be risky and not pay off. So how have you managed this challenge? Oh, it moves fast, yeah. Um, that, that's a benefit though, because it, the community moves so quickly that uh, today's hot technology can be tomorrow's dinosaur. And uh, what, we, what we tend to do is, is we fail fast and fail often. We try a lot of things. Um, you, know, you look at Kubernetes, for example, um, that ecosystem is driven by thousands of intelligent developers, engineers, builders, they're adding value every day. Uh, so we have to really keep up with that. And as the stack changes, we, we try different technologies, we try different methods. And at the end of the day, we come up with a better platform as a result of just the constant change in the environment. Uh, it is a challenge for us, but it's, uh, it's something that we just do every day. So we have a survey partner down in New York City called uh, Enterprise Technology Research, ETR, and they do these quarterly surveys of about 1,500 CIOs, IT practitioners, and they really have a good pulse on what's happening with spending. And the data shows that containers generally, but specifically Kubernetes, is one of the areas that has kind of been off the charts and seen the most significant adoption and velocity uh, particularly, you know, along with cloud, but but really Kubernetes is just, you know, still up and to the right consistently, even with, you know, the macro headwinds and a lot of the stuff that we're sick of talking about. But so what are you doing with Kubernetes in the platform? Yeah, it, it's really central to our ability to run the product. Um, when we first started out, uh, we were just on AWS um, and and the way we were running was, was a little bit uh, like containers junior. Uh, now we're running Kubernetes everywhere, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Uh, it allows us to have a consistent experience across three different cloud providers and uh, we can manage that in code. So our developers can focus on delivering services, not trying to learn the intricacies of Amazon, Azure, and Google, and figure out how to deliver services um, on those three clouds with all of their differences. Just to follow up on that, is it, no, so I presume it sounds like there's a PaaS layer there to allow you guys to have a consistent experience across clouds and you know, out to the edge, you know, wherever. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, so we've basically built uh, more or less platform engineering, uh, as is the new hot phrase. Uh, you know, it, it's Kubernetes has made a lot of things easy for us because we've built a platform that our uh, developers can lean on and they only have to learn one way of deploying their application, managing their application. Um, and so that, that just gets all of the underlying infrastructure out of the way and, and lets them focus on delivering Influx Cloud. Yeah, and I know I'm taking a little bit of a tangent, but is that, that, I'll call it a PaaS layer, if I can use that term. Is that, are there specific attributes to Influx DB, or is it kind of just generally off the shelf PaaS? Um, you know, are there, is, is there any purpose built capability there that, that is, is value add, or is it pretty much generic? So we really build, um, we, we look at things through with a build versus buy, uh, through a build versus buy lens. Uh, some things we want to leverage, uh, cloud provider services, for instance, Postgres databases for metadata, perhaps. Um, get that off of our plate, let someone else run that. Uh, we're going to deploy a platform that our engineers can can deliver on, that has consistency, that uh, is, is all generated from code, that we can 
uh, as, a, as an SRE group, as an ops team, um, that we can manage uh, with very few people, really. And uh, we can stamp out clusters across multiple regions in, in no time. So, how, so sometimes you build, sometimes you buy. How do you make those decisions and, and what does that mean for the, for the platform and for customers? Yeah, so what we're doing is, it's like everybody else will do. We're looking for trade-offs that make sense. Um, you know, we really want to protect our customers' data. So we look for services that support our own software um, with the most uptime reliability and durability we can get. Um, some things are just going to be easier to have a cloud provider take care of on our behalf. Uh, we make that transparent for our own team. And of course, for customers, you don't even see that. Um, but we don't want to try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, like I had mentioned with SQL data stores for metadata, perhaps. Let's build on top of what these three large cloud providers have already perfected. Uh, and we can then focus on our platform engineering and we can have our developers then focus on the Influx data software, the Influx cloud software. So take it to the customer level. Um, what does it mean for them? What's the value that they're going to get out of all these innovations that we've been, been talking about today and what can they expect in the future? So, First of all, people who use the OSS product are really going to be at home on our cloud platform. Um, you can run it on your desktop machine, on a single server, what have you, um, but then you want to scale up. Uh, we have some 270 terabytes of data across over 4 billion series keys that people have stored. So there's a proven ability to scale. Now in terms of the open source, open source software and how we've developed the platform, you're getting highly available high cardinality time series platform. We manage it um, and, and really, as, as I mentioned earlier, we can keep up with the state of the art. Uh, we keep reinventing, we keep deploying things in real time. We deploy to our platform every day, repeatedly, all the time. Uh, and it's that continuous deployment that allows us to continue testing things in flight, rolling things out that change, uh, new features, uh, better ways of doing deployments, safer ways of doing deployments. Um, all of that happens behind the scenes. And uh, we had mentioned earlier Kubernetes. I mean, that, that allows us to get that done. Uh, we couldn't do it without uh, having that platform as a, as a base layer for us to then put our software on. Um, so we, we iterate quickly. Uh, when you're on the, the Influx Cloud platform, you really are able to take advantage of new features immediately. Uh, we roll things out every day. Uh, and as those things go into production, you have, you have the ability to, to use them. Um, and so, in the end, we want you to focus on getting actionable insights from your data instead of running infrastructure. You know, let, let us do that for you. So, and that makes sense. But so is the, is the, are the innovations that we're talking about in the evolution of InfluxDB, do you, do you see that as sort of a natural evolution for existing customers? Is it, I'm, I'm sure the answer is both, but is it opening up new territory uh, for customers? Can you add some color to that? Yeah, it really is. Um, it, it's a little bit of both. Um, any engineer will say, well, it depends. Uh, so cloud native technologies are, are really the hot thing. Uh, IoT, industrial IoT especially, um, people want to just shove tons of data out there and be able to do queries immediately. Uh, and they don't want to manage infrastructure. Uh, what we've started to see are people that use the cloud service as their, their data store backbone. And then they use uh, edge computing with our OSS product to ingest data from say multiple uh, production lines and downsample that data, send the rest of that data off to Influx Cloud where the heavy processing takes place. So really us being in all the different clouds and iterating on that and being in all sorts of different regions allows for people to really get out of the, the business of trying to manage that big data, have us take care of that. Um, and of course, as we change the platform end users benefit from that immediately. And, and so obviously taking away a lot of the heavy lifting uh, for the infrastructure, would you say the same thing about security, especially as you go out to IOT and the edge, how should we be thinking about the value that you bring from a security perspective? Yeah, we take, we take security super seriously. Um, it, it's built into our DNA. Um, we do a lot of work to ensure that um, our platform is secure, that uh, the data we store is, is kept private. Um, it's of course uh, always a concern you see in the news all the time, companies being compromised. Um, you know, that's something that you can have an entire team working on, which we do, uh, to make sure that the data that you have, whether it's in transit, whether it's at rest, um, is always kept secure, is only viewable by you. 
Um, you, you look at things like software bill of materials. If you're running this yourself, um, you have to go vet all sorts of different pieces of software. And we do that. Uh, you know, as we use new tools, um, that's something that that's just part of our jobs uh, to make sure that the platform that we're running um, it, it has has fully vetted software. Uh, and and you know, with open source, especially, uh, that's a lot of work. And so it's it's definitely uh, new territory. Uh, uh, supply chain attacks are are definitely happening at a higher clip than they used to. Um, but that is that is really just part of a day in the life for folks like us that are are building platforms. Yeah, and that's key. I mean, especially when you start getting into the, the you know the, we talk about IoT and the operations technologies, the engineers running the, that infrastructure. You know, historically, as you know, Tim, they they would air gap everything. That's how they kept it safe. But that's not feasible anymore. Everything can't do that. Connected now, right? And so you've got to have a partner that is again take away that heavy lifting through R and D, so you can focus on some of the other activities. All right, give us the the last word and the, the key takeaways from your perspective. Well, you know, from my perspective, I see it as as a, a two lane approach uh, with with influx with any time series data. You know, you've got a lot of stuff that you're going to run on prem. What you mentioned, air gapping, sure, there's plenty of need for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, people that don't want to run big data centers, people that want to entrust their data um, to to a company that's that's got a full platform set up for them uh, that they can build on. Uh, send that data over to the cloud. Uh, the cloud is not going away. I think more hybrid approach is, is where the future lives and uh, that's what we're prepared for. Tim, really appreciate you coming to the program. Great stuff, good to see you. Thanks very much, appreciate it. Okay, in a moment, I'll be back to wrap up today's session. You're watching theCUBE.